The following is a fantasy rebuild. All and any of these trades and acquisitions are not designed to mimic real life in any way. Every acquisition is purely for fun and for the sake of entertainment. So if you get mad at me for trading in a video game, I would suggest you reassess your current situation because what, quite frankly, you're being cunty. You're being a little bit cunty. So if you would like to download my custom rebuild rosters that are edited with every team that I rebuild, there's a video on my channel that goes over every single setting I have for my rebuilds, including where to download the roster in the Madden 17 rebuilding playlist that will have every single team that I rebuild, and I will be rebuilding every single team. If you'd like me to rebuild a historic team, please replace that current team with the players from the historic roster and put the team's current players into free agency and tweet me at Designs with where to download the roster on Xbox One and be sure to follow me if you don't already. You guys have been destroying 500 likes recently, so let's try and stretch it to 600. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoy, and let's get right into the rebuild. I don't know if it was a good idea to start this while eating Twizzlers, but it shows my level of professionalism. What's going on, guys? And today, why have I? Why am I still chewing? We're going to rebuild the Buccaneers. Got a lot of good talent on this roster, but they're kind of a brink team that maybe they'll make the playoffs, maybe they won't. This is a fucking awful intro. Um, but, you know, Mike Evans, Doug Moore, and Gerald McCoy, top three players. We had the head coach here, Dirk Coter. How the fuck do you say his name? I have no idea. What, what am I fucking doing? We're rebuilding the Bucks. I'm excited. Um, let's get right into it. I'll tell you what, though. Trading for these Twizzlers was not a bad idea. It took me three batteries, and I got $3. Or four batteries, I got $3, and a half a bag of Twizzlers. Not a bad look. Um, but if you're looking at this roster, you know, a bunch of good players in here. Jameis Winston is going to develop nicely. He's got probably quick, right? Quick development, that's that's nice. And, um, yeah, probably going to trade VJAX, too old. And then on defense, we got Quan Alexander. Daryl Smith is probably getting traded. Chris Conte, I don't even know how you're on a fucking roster. He's actually not too bad, but he's not going to be on the team. Brent Grimes, you have like 45 speed and you're 90 years old. Both accurate facts. Um, so yeah, let's get right into this. The first start of any great rebuild, in my opinion, is trading for picks. And we're going to do that here. Robert Ayers. Ooh, what the, yo, my mind. I just went brain dead for half a second. Robert Ayers, Brent Grimes, and Vincent Jackson for two first round picks from the Chicago Bears. Um, and that should be a good pick uh, in both years. So we're clearing out some old players and clearing some ca uh, salary cap. Um, and we're getting some good picks out of it. So that's solid. With this trade, I'm going to trade Clinton McDonald, Akeem Spence, and a third round pick for Carlos Dunlap. I figured I'd try to go for uh, some players that I don't usually trade for. I'm just kind of feeling it. And Carlos Dunlap is one of those, I'd say, really, really talented young players that I just have never even traded for before. So that's cool. Going to fill the spot that um, Robert Ayers was leaving open at left end after we traded him. I considered starting Noah Spence in there, seeing if he could develop really well. Um, where is he listed? He might get in the game anyway. At right end, I suppose. So I feel like that's not too big of an issue. With this trade, I'm trading DeMar Dotson and Chris Conti for the number one overall projected pick from the Cleveland Browns. And I'm actually probably going to try and get their other one. Uh, actually, or maybe I'll go after a different team. I really like getting picks in this year's game because they just hold so much weight and so much value. If you can draft good players, you pretty much set yourself up for a successful rebuild, in my opinion. With this trade, I am trading William Golson, Alteron Werner, in my second round draft pick, which I'm a little bit hesitant to get rid of, but... No, apparently not really, but we're getting the number two projected draft pick as well as the number five overall projected draft pick. So that is really, really nice. Um, and I'm almost done trading, I would say. Only a few more players to kind of clear out of the roster. Um, I really just want to build around my youth, which sounds weird, but... Yeah, I think we're doing okay. This is so close to being accepted, and yes, even though I have a running back, maybe even two running backs that are fine to start... I want Todd Gurley on the team, uh, and I think that I can get him, although I don't know. I don't have a third round pick this year, which would hold some value and get this trade done, so maybe it won't happen. There's a good chance, I guess, that it won't. So we are adding Joe Hawley to the list along with J.R. Sweezy and Keith Tandy, and yes, Todd Gurley is the newest Tampa Bay Buccaneer, um, and yes, that puts Doug Martin and Charles Sims on the trading block. I guess Charles Sims is already there, but um, Doug Martin, the muscle hamster, the Duggar not. I mean, I like him on the team. I really do. ex Boise State beast. I had a really, really good rookie season. A really good season last season as well. But I just... I don't want that cap hit. 
Um, I think it would be better utilized elsewhere. And even though he's an extremely talented player, um, I'm going to see what's out there. I'm going to see what I can get. So, unfortunately, I really could not get any players with Charles Sims and Doug Martin. For whatever reason, running backs in this game really hold no trade value. Um, but I am trading Charles Sims, Doug Martin, and a second-round pick next year for the number three overall projected pick from the 49ers. And I've pretty much just accumulated so many picks that I'm probably going to either end up trading down several of them for picks next year to have even more value, to get even more picks, or trade them for superstar players, which um, could very easily happen. But um, this is going to be the roster. Ty Gurley, of course, is going to make the start at running back. The offensive line pretty much stays the same, um, except for right guard. Uh, Ali Marpet is sliding on over to left in the absence of whoever the hell I traded there. Uh, Daryl Smith is still on the team. Okay, totally forgot about that. He's getting traded before we go. But other than that, this is going to be the roster. Uh, I'm actually probably going to trade Jaquie Smith as well. Um, Noah Spence is getting the start. And then I'll see you guys at the midseason mark to see how we do. With this trade, I'm trading Daryl Smith a 6 and a 4th this year for another first round pick, this time from the Seattle Seahawks. And sometimes it is fairly rare, but they do tank in year one for reasons unknown. So maybe that's gonna end up being a really good pick. Probably not, I think they're gonna do quite well. Um, but we're also gonna move Jaquie Smith. And then again, I'll see you guys at the midseason mark. Let's see what we can get for him. With this trade, I am trading Jaquie Smith as well as a fifth round pick and a third next year for Ronald Darby and a fifth round pick this year. Ronald Darby, one of the best young cornerbacks in the entirety of the NFL. Uh, and for some reason, he is extremely easy to trade for. Um, I might go out and even trade for Bradley Roby. That could be the look. I think he's like really, really easy to trade for for, for whatever reason. He is, I guess, behind Aqib Tlaib um, and Chris Harris Jr. on the depth chart. So that could be a reason. I'm not really sure. With this trade, I am trading a future first-round pick as well as Mike Lennon and Howard Jones. For Bradley Roby and a fifth round pick, Bradley Roby is going to play that nickel spot. Definitely going to be wanting Vernon Hargraves to start. Um, yeah, let's go ahead and change that. And finally, after I have absolutely dismantled this roster, uh, I've noticed that I still have Bradley McDougall on the team, and I just don't want that. <laughs> oh my god, I'm about to trade even more. Oh my. With this trade, I am trading, oh boy, Ad J Barima. And Bradley McDougald for Jack Muhord from the Colts. Only 24 years old, 84 overall. He's our new starting left guard. Ali Marpet's going to slide back over to right tackle. Nope, right guard. That is finally going to be the accumulation of all the trading I'm doing here in season number one. And I will see you guys at the midseason mark. Finally. At the midseason mark, we are 2-5. and five, Actually doing a little bit better than I would have expected. 1-6 and six are the New Orleans Saints in 6-1. and one are the Carolina Panthers at the top of the division. Brian Anger is our biggest free agent. I'm going to be bringing him back, so let's get that right out of the way. Brian Anger, welcome back to Tampa Bay. So at the end of season number one, we went two and 14. This surprisingly is good. I wanted to tank, wanted the number one overall draft selection so I can do really whatever I want with it. Jameis Winston, 3,500 yards, 22 touchdowns, 16 interceptions, so not a great season, but Ty Gurley, with 1,000 yards and 6 touchdowns. Mike Evans, almost 1,000 yards, 5 touchdowns. Cecil Shorts, with 6 touchdowns. How did the offensive line hold up? Okay, that answers that question. 33 sacks for Donovan Smith. That's over to a game. Quan Alexander led the team with 140 tackles. Tackles for loss, 17 for Gerald McCoy, 10 for Carlos Dunlap. QB sacks, 7 would lead the team. Carlos Dunlap with 6. Interceptions, Bradley Roby with 4 in the nickel. Quan Alexander with 3. Ronald Darby. Did the same. Force fumbles. Four from Devontae Lambert would lead the team. He also had four recoveries. Who is this character? He's a beast. Two defensive touchdowns, both cornerbacks, Ronald Darby and Vernon Hargraves. Let's go ahead and look at the awards real quick. Tom Brady wins league MVP. Phillip Rivers of the 14-2 San Diego Chargers comes in second. Again, doubt we're, well, not again, I haven't even said it. I doubt we're going to see any bucks in here. Aaron Rodgers wins Offensive Player of the Year for the NFC. No bucks. Defensive Player of the Year. I could potentially see a Buccaneer, and we do not. Jake Ryan slips in there at number 10. Carson Wentz gets the Offensive Rookie of the Year nod, just like how that's going in real life at the time of this recording. And Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Keanu Neal. Devontae Lambert comes in second. Noah Spence at four. Ryan Smith at five. Vernon Hargraves at eight. 
Would have been really nice to win any of those. We would have gotten a lot more XP than we probably did. But that's going to do it for season number one. Let's go ahead and simulate now to the off season. And I probably won't resign anybody. But um, we have a lot of money to go after free agents um, in free agency. If any really good ones are out there. We're, we probably won't sign anyone though. If we're going to be completely honest. We have so many picks. So we should be able to fill a bunch of holes with those. So Andrew Whitworth is a free agent. He's a 92 overall. But I have absolutely no interest in a 35 year old left tackle. That I'm going to pay 9 mil a year. And then he's going to retire after one season. Really do not want that. Also I think I mumbled the word gonna. Like really really hardcore. Yeah I don't really want any of these free agents. So we're just going to go ahead and simulate two the next week so we can do some scouting and then follow up with the NFL draft. We have so many picks uh, and I did not do a great job scouting in all honesty as Ryan Fitzpatrick heads to Cleveland. I'm going to check out these news stories and see if there are any draft stories I might want to take uh, note of. Alright guys, so here in the draft we actually don't have the number one overall pick. The Miami Dolphins managed to get that. We do have two, three, four, five, eight, 20, 27, I, I guess that was the Seattle Seahawks, and then I don't think we even have a second round pick, um, and the number one player off the board is a wide receiver, Sands, definitely did not expect that to happen, every, every sign was pointing to the quarterback, Shamir Rankin, who is admittedly extremely, extremely good, um, and I might just take him, to be honest, um, I know I have Jameis Winston, but I have a feeling that he might be the best player in the entire draft. Um, but this offer from the Browns is actually way too good to uh, let go. So we're going to be trading back with the Browns. And I imagine they are be going to be, going to be taking uh, Shamir Rankin. And here they are. And there he goes. We're going to check him out after the draft. Um, and let's maybe look to trade this pick down as well. With this pick, I will be taking Ellis June, a wide receiver out of Tennessee. B-plus catching, B-plus spec catch, and B-minus release are really, really good. He also has a great broad jump and a very fast 40 time at a 4 4 6. So, Ellis June, welcome to the team. Gonna be 76 overall, but superstar development. So, I don't care that he's number 26 in true talent. Superstar development is OP. He's also pretty fast and he has great spec catch. So, all we have to do is upgrade awareness and catching traffic and catching and route running. It'll be a beast. He already is actually really good. So, really, really solid pick here at number two, despite him being a 76 overall. And now we even have some more picks to go through. One, two, three, four, five, and six more picks. Oh my god. I'm probably going to trade this pick down, though. I'm going to be trading with the Baltimore Ravens here for their first rounder this year and next year, as well as a seventh round pick, but that's kind of irrelevant. Uh, and I'm very interested to see who they're going to take. And they're going with a defensive tackle. He was okay, not great in my opinion. Um, yeah, so I'm not really missing out on too much there, I don't think. With this pick, I am trading down with the Saints for a first next year, a second next year, and a third this year. And I know trading down does get a little bit boring, but um, and I do care about that, obviously. Uh, but I'm just trying to do the best for this organization. If that means trading down for future picks and dominating the league by year three, uh, it's what I'm going to do. And with this pick, I am going to be trading down with the Oakland Raiders for their first next year, as well as a second and a fourth this year. And that's probably going to be one of the last trade downs I do in the first round. Um, as they take a middle linebacker, and there's a right end that I was interested in. I kind of wanted him to go off the board, so I had the excuse not to take him. And I'm following up with Jalen Sproul. Sproul. Spruel. Sproul. Fuck. Uh, he, he has really good top three skills, a really good combine as well. Welcome to the team. 78 overall, playmaker type, normal development, 89 speed, 82 zone, 88 hit power. He's not bad. I like how the play rec and the awareness is probably going to be low. So he has a lot of room to develop. But it is just so nice to see superstar development. And when you don't see that afterwards, um, it's a little bit of a letdown each time. Uh, as a player I was interested in. Just got drafted to the Colts. Um, I actually really, really wanted him. I totally forgot about him. His name was Rashawn McDonald. Uh, and I'm kind of beating myself up now after letting him go. That's stupid. I'm probably going to trade for him. Probably going to trade for him. But with this pick, going to be taking an outside linebacker. Ronnie Roundtree out of Florida State. Top three skills are exceptional. Really good combine as well. 74 overall. That's extremely surprising to me. Um... He's not what I expected him to be. 
His stats or attributes really not that bad, but 74 overall, I absolutely did not expect. It's unfortunate. I'm probably going to trade him, I guess. With this pick, though, I am taking Darian Boston, a wide receiver out of Wisconsin. Um, again, good top three skills, good combine, 76 overall, superstar development. Uh, his, I wish his spec catch was a bit higher, but overall, he's not that. He's not bad. Um, we drafted him at number 20. He's number 16 in true talent. Um, so, decent pick. He's not fantastic, though. Uh, so, nothing to get crazy over, I guess. With this pick, I am taking... Cian or, why, why can't I speak English today? Santiago Merciless, out of Oklahoma. Um, really fast, strong as well. Amazing top three skills. Santiago Merciless, 77 overall with quick development. Exactly what I'm looking for in a linebacker. He could slide to outside linebacker if I wanted him to. Um, I might change to a 3-4. I'm not exactly sure what I'm doing yet. I'm kind of, you know... Taking players, weighing my options, that sort of deal. With this pick, I'm trading down with the Colts for their first next year, as well as a fifth this year. I'm not probably even going to use that fifth-round draft pick. Uh, I just want one more pick, and hopefully I the, I can take the player that I'm looking for. And he is still on the board, LeCambric Patton. Great top three skills, excellent combine. It's steered us wrong in the past, but let's hope he's pretty good. And he's going to be a 76 overall with superstar development. That's didn't... What? <laughs> Idiot. Quick development. Um, so, not bad. He's definitely going to get the starting job. I don't know what I'm doing yet um, at outside linebacker or linebacker or what our scheme's going to be. But that's probably going to do it for this draft. Uh, I might just take one shot in the dark uh, with a player and hope for the best. And uh, any ballers in this draft class? If you guys don't know what a baller is, um, it's this term that I coined... For anyone that skips the combine, and the way you can see that is when they have dashes. I think it's like two, maybe three dashes next to each other where their combine grade should be. But I'm not really seeing any. So it's safe to say that there's probably nobody there. So I'm just going to simulate. Why not? And uh, hope for the best. So I will see you guys. Actually, let's just fucking trade this down for a second next year. Why not? That's way more valuable. Um, Seattle Seahawks. Let's do it with the Oakland Raiders. And I'll see you guys at the draft recap. I want to see that quarterback for sure. And I want to trade for that player from the Colts that they, they didn't steal him from me, but they took him and I wanted him. So I'm low-key kind of pissed. So it looks like the Browns finally got their quarterback of the future. He is an 82 overall with superstar development. It says 80 up top right. I don't know why that is. Um, but he's an incredible player. Would have liked to have him, obviously, but we do have Jameis Winston, so there's really no need. Uh, and checking out the Colts player that I wanted. Uh, Rashawn McDonald, 79 overall, superstar development, of course, because those are always the players that I miss out on. His hairline, kind of whack, but that doesn't matter. He's a talented player. I'm going to try to get him. If we can't, we can't. Um, but we did draft some good players. Hopefully they can make an impact for us. So let's go ahead and start season number two. With this trade, I am trading two of our drafted players, Ronnie Roundtree and Santiago Merciless, as well as a second-round pick this year for Rashawn McDonald. That linebacker that we really, really wanted but could not draft from the Colts. And it worked out for the best anyway. Uh, getting rid of a player that we didn't want uh, and upgrading. He's going to be starting at right outside linebacker because for whatever reason, Levante David, although playing right outside linebacker, keeps transitioning to left on the depth chart. So I might as well just keep him there. So this is going to be the roster for season number two. I'm expecting much better results. Um, and by that, I mean like maybe five or six wins. The team is significantly better, but that is not to say that there are not holes. I mean, look at free safety, for example. Um, but the team is improved, so I guess I'll go ahead and see you guys at the midseason mark. So at the midseason mark, we are 2-6, and six, which is effectively tying, I believe, our uh, last season win total. Mike Evans is a free agent. Going to be looking to bring him back, obviously. Um, same thing with Jack Muhor, Austin Safarian Jenkins. Although getting cut in real life is going to be staying on the team. And then Bradley Roby as well. Going to be bringing him back for sure. Mike Evans, welcome back. Jack Muhort is also coming back. ASJ is coming back as well. And Bradley Roby has been secured for another couple years as well. That's all the players that I'm going to be re-signing at this juncture. Going to do some scouting. And um, I'll see you guys at the playoffs. We're not going to make it. I didn't intend on making it. If you guys have never been here before, Season 3 is our year. It always is. It always will be. Season 3, we're going to dominate. It's just what ends up happening. At the end of season number 2, we went 6-10. and 10. Again, I'm not freaking out 
whatsoever. I think we are we are fine. We're in the driver's seat as long as Jameis Winston start coming or starts coming around 3,800 yards, 23 touchdowns to 20 interceptions is not good. Um, Todd Gurley with almost 1,300 yards and seven touchdowns. Rookie Kadorius Waddle with 10 touchdowns as a backup. Mike Evans almost 1,200 yards, eight touchdowns. Uh, the two rookies combined for eight touchdowns as well. Ellis June with more catches but less yards and less touchdowns significantly than Dre Boston, Darian Boston, whatever. <laughs> QB sacks 29 from Donovan Smith. That's a little much. Quan Alexander led our team in tackles with 143. Tackles for loss will be 21 from Gerald McCoy, 11 from rookie LeCambrick Patton. QB sacks 5.5 from Rookie LeCambrick Patton led the team. Carlos Dunlap had the same. I don't know why we're not getting a lot of pressure. Ronald Darby with seven interceptions, though. Bradley Roby with four. We sure are getting interceptions, but not a lot of pressure on the quarterback. Noah Spence with three forced fumbles. Fumble recoveries would be one. A lot of players had one. And then any defensive touchdowns? No. No, no, no. Let's go ahead and check out awards, see who won. What? Aaron Rodgers wins MVP. Le'Veon Bell in second place. Any bucks? Nope. NFC Offense Player of the Year goes to Aaron Rodgers. No bucks in there. Defense Player of the Year goes to Tahir Whitehead of the Detroit Lions. No bucks in there. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Scott Bergstrom, rookie quarterback for the Rams. Darian Boston at number three. Quadorius Waddle at number four. Ellis June at number six. And then Brady, no, Brody Lockler at number 10. Defense Rookie of the Year goes to Rashawn McDonald. We made the right move in trading for him, obviously. And then LeCambric Patton comes in seventh. And Safety, Jalen Spruill at number eight. But that's going to do it for season number two. I've re-signed all the players that I've had to re-sign. Um, and let's go ahead and take this one into the offseason. So in free agency, there are some interesting options. Devontae Freeman is here. Do I just go for the old bait and switch with Todd Gurley? Drew Brees also here, not interested. Although, um, to be fair... Jameis Winston not really progressing at the rate that I would like him to. Haha, ha, Clinton Dix is here, but he's getting overpaid from the Redskins, I'm sure. Coney Ely is an option we might look into. Uh, I don't really think I'm going to be signing anybody. It's just not worth it to me, if that makes any sense. Uh, but yeah, um, we need a good draft. 6-10 and 10 is unacceptable. I'm sure we're going to do better in Season 3, but if Jameis Winston doesn't start actually throwing accurate passes and touchdowns and throwing for even more yards... We're going to be in a tough situation. Oh my god. Rashawn McDonald has 49,899 XP. Defensive Rookie of the Year. Got a ton. Where is he getting all of this XP from? That is absolutely ridiculous. 49,000. I'm not sure if I've ever seen that many... Um, that many before that that much XP that is absolutely ridiculous. He's gonna he's gonna go so 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 high into the overalls from a 79 after I develop him He's up to an 86. That's you know, I'd say that's pretty good for uh, still in his rookie year in the 2017 NFL draft we have the first second fifth and 12th oh man, I should have turned off relocation fucking the Chargers probably changed to whatever that fucking B is you also have the 17th and the 30th pick in the first round. Um, so with the first pick, I'm probably going to trade this one. Probably the likelihood is quite high. Look who remembered a pause they draft all by themselves. Oh. With this trade, I am trading two ones for Zach Martin and Travis Frederick from the Cowboys. Um, decent trade for us. I know I've acquired those players in the past. Um, but they're very, very good, obviously. We still have the number one and the number two overall pick, and we've secured our offensive line uh, a little bit more. As you can see now, at left guard, we're still having Jack B. Hort, uh, but at center now, we have Travis Frederick, and at right guard, we can afford to get rid of Ali Marpet because we picked up Zach Martin. Um, so I'm, I really like where we are right now, and I'm still looking to move this number one overall pick. I should be able to find a trade partner really easily. It has so much value being the number one overall pick. Just got to find the right trade partner, and I got to figure out what exactly I want. With this trade, I am trading the number one overall pick, Ali Marpet, and the number 12 overall pick for Vaughn Miller, the newest Tampa Bay Buccaneer. He's going to be playing right end for us more than likely, or actually, you know what? Even better idea. I think I'm going to trade 
Yeah, I know I just got him. I think I'm going to be trading Carlos Dunlap and then move Noah Spence. Or actually, we'll keep Noah Spence at right end and then move Von Miller to left end. So I guess the newest player is on the chopping block, Carlos Dunlap. A little bit surprising, but he is decreasing in overall. He is all the way down to an 85 overall, getting paid nearly 10 million a year. No, thank you. I'm not going to trade him right now, actually. We're going we're gonna to hold off. We're going to hold off. Whoa, whoa, are the Cowboys offering me three first-round picks for this number two overall? We're definitely going to have to consider that. Um, I don't know if I'm going to be making that move, though. It makes the most sense to do that, I think. Um, no, it doesn't. I can't, I can't, I can't. I have a player that I want um, too badly. He plays right tackle. Stefan Johnstone. Great combine. Really well-balanced top three skills. Stefan Johnstone. 78 overall. Superstar development. I don't care that he's ranked number 21. He is quite good. Superstar development. New starting right tackle. Finally someone that's actually quite talented. Didn't want to risk him going at number five. It was very possible. Especially with the Vikings taking a tackle. With this pick, I am taking PJ McIntosh out of Georgia. Phenomenal top three skills. Great combine as well. 4-4-5-40. Four, four, That's kind of a tongue twister. That's the number one in the class that so would need 6-4. Did I mention that? Really, really tall. PJ McIntosh, 80 overall with superstar development. Solid pick. Solid pick. 92 speed, 85 zone, 87 hit power. And his play rec and awareness are super low. 58 play rec. So this guy not only has superstar development and is already an 80 overall, he's going to develop at a crazy rate and upgrade really, really easily. Dare I say 90 overall by the end of Season 3? Could happen if he wins If he wins an award. With this pick, I'm taking Landon Trainer, power back, out of Delaware. 70 overall. It doesn't matter. It's a second round pick, and I, uh, I don't know. He's not good. It doesn't really matter. We're going to be going into season number three now. I wonder if I have any first rounders next year. I don't know what I'm going to end up doing with them. We, there. I mean, there's a really, really good chance that we go on to season number four if we don't do well in this season. Um, there's a really good chance, so I might even want to hold on to it. I don't know. A lot of decisions to make for sure. With this trade, I am trading Donovan Smith, a first round pick and a third round pick for Tyron Smith from the Dallas Cowboys. Yeah, we're basically... What? what did they decline that? Yo. Okay. They're actually... Fuck. Alright, we're trading a second round pick. That's accepted. <laughs> like, what the... Alright, Tyron Smith, best left tackle in the league in my opinion. Uh, and we basically just imported the Dallas Cowboys entire offensive line onto our team. Tyron Smith, Travis Frederick, and Zach Martin. Uh, honestly, can you go wrong though? Can you go wrong? Team is looking pretty nice. I feel like we're going to have a lot more success this year, obviously. And uh, yeah, I guess I'll see you guys at the midseason mark to check in. At the midseason mark, we are 4-3, and three, which although is not great, that's currently at the tying for the lead uh, for the NFC South. It's not looking great, <laughs> I'll be honest. Um, and we have a couple players going into contract years, none bigger than Todd Gurley, though, in my opinion. Going to need to secure him. Jameis Winston, pretty huge as well. And I forgot to trade Carlos Dunlap. Oh, fuck. Okay, so he's going to go down in overall. And uh, I, might, I might not even be able to hold on to him. Oh, that went very poorly. All right, Todd Gurley's coming back, though. And on a monster contract, so is Jameis Winston. Carlos Dunlap is coming back as well. Here's the thing. Probably just going to be a sign-in trade. I can't trade him right now. That's why I had to re-sign him. Just see, there's too much value there for me to lose. He's going to be like still maybe an 83 overall, and that's you know still a very good player. Um, so I do want to keep him on the team, and then we'll trade him later probably. Ronald Darby is coming back as well, and that's probably the bulk of the signing I'm going to do right now. Um, actually, let's do Quan Alexander as well. Yep, he is returning. Also, I want him to be better. I don't. I wish he had quick development. That would have been very helpful, but it's not the case. So, <sighs> I guess we're going to scout, and then I'll see you guys uh, at the playoffs. I think we're going to make it. I really do. Just um, hopefully in Season 4, because you know, we are probably going to uh, play Season 4, we will be able to make the playoffs and do really well. So, at the end of Season number 3, as I told you guys, Season 3 is our year. I guess it's our year, though. 
to suck it up and move to a fourth season because we fucking suck. Checking out the season stats, Jameis Winston, as disappointing as ever, 3,600 yards, 25 touchdowns, 13 interceptions. That's abysmal. Todd Gurley with almost 1,400 yards and 8 touchdowns receiving. Uh, Ellis Schoen would lead the team in catches. Mike Evans with 1,100 yards and 9 touchdowns. Darian Boston with 8 touchdowns as well, blocking um, 11 sacks from rookie Stephon Johnstone. Not really that bad. Tyron Smith, though, with 9 is slightly concerning, although Quan Alexander would lead the team in tackles with 138. Tackles for loss would be 18 from Von Miller and QB sacks. What do you expect? Von Miller with 16 and a half interceptions, four for Ronald Darby and four for Vernon Hargraves led the team. Forced fumbles would be two from Von Miller. He also added a recovery to that list. And he also had a defensive touchdown. That would be the only one on the team. Hopefully we had some rookie of the years as Russell Wilson wins MVP. I hate how the Chargers are the Blues. Um, that's seriously annoying. NFC Offensive Player of the Year goes to Russell Wilson. Um, Eli Manning gets in there at number seven. Defensive Player of the Year goes to Jalen Smith of the Cowboys. He's all the way up to an 88 overall. Offensive Rookie of the Year goes to Kay Schroeder. Halfback Lynn and Trainer at number six. And then Defensive Rookie of the Year goes to Calvin Troop. I was seriously hoping for PJ McIntosh. Um, and he's not going to be able to get it. That is unfortunate to say the least. Um, but, y you know. We're going to move on. A bunch of XP to work with. 26K for Ty Gurley. And that's going to take us into the offseason. And um, year four hopefully will be a lot better. I'm thinking playoffs. I'm thinking a really good record. We just need Jameis Winston to start actually developing well. His stats are pretty good. He's just he's just not, or excuse me, his attributes are good. His stats need to be better. Uh, that's what it's going to take for us to win. There are no free agents that I'm interested in. So uh, for the most part, we're just going to, let him go. Not going to sign anyone too interesting. So you'd be surprised how many people actually whine for me to get Pernell McPhee. And that's kind of a weird thing to whine about as Pernell McPhee is like, I don't know, not exciting. He is a talented player, but I don't know. He's kind of, eh. But he's on the team now. He's going to be playing end for us. Um, he's going to be playing right end. Let's go ahead and slide him, ooh, slide him down. And, um, yeah, I'm probably going to skip the draft. I don't have any picks. So there's no real need to do it. So I guess I'll go ahead and see you guys for the start of the fourth and final season, more than likely. See you there. All right, guys, this is going to be the roster for what is going to be more than likely the fourth and final season. I think it'd be a real shame if we have to go to a season number five for reasons that I cannot disclose at this time. Um, team's looking pretty good. Best offensive line in football, I think it's safe to say. Austin, Safarian, Jenkins could be better. My wide receiver core could be a little bit better, uh, to be fair. I might want to go out and try to pick up a wide receiver number four um, just for another target for Jameis to potentially throw to defensively, though. I think we're looking pretty strong. Linebacking core is nice. Rashawn McDonald's up to a 90. P.J. McIntosh going into his second season to an 87 overall. Um, the entire secondary is an 85 or above. And then the D-line is, I think, pretty good as well. So uh, I might try to get a backup middle linebacker and uh, wide receiver number four. But if I can't do that, I'll just see you guys at the midseason mark. With this trade, I'm trading a first and a second for Tyler Boyd and Zach Brown. Um, it is what it is. I don't really need those picks. So just kind of wasting it there. And um, yeah, I'll go ahead and see you guys at the midseason mark. Oh shit, a fucking again, man. Fucking controller. Oh, dad, can I hold on to fucking anything? God, now the Pepsi bottle. Wish I had Coca Cola. Fuck, man. What is life? There we go. At the midseason mark, we are 7 and 0. Oh. Very encouraging sign. Um, players are getting XP at a fairly good rate. Check out Jameis Winston, please. Okay, that's that's good. That is a good spot for him. And, um, I mean, what else are we going to do? I don't need to re-sign anybody. Might as well just simulate to the playoffs. Could we go undefeated? Answer, no. 13-3. and three. This always happens. We absolutely dominate and then go 13-3. and three. Every time it's undefeated, it's 13-3, and three, except for once. Rebuild Battle against Wiza, you can find that on my channel, in the Rebuild Battle playlist. 15-1. and one. Could we repeat that? Probably not. We'll find out shortly. 
on next week on Dragon Ball Z. Never seen an episode. I just have the frame of reference for God knows what reason. So I already see that Jameis Winston won MVP in the lower left. Please. My first undefeated season in rebuild history. 15-1. and one. Oh, fuck. Who do we lose to? Who did we lose to? No. No. The Saints. By three points. The Saints. AJ McCarron. AJ fucking McCarron in this. What? How? How did we lose? There's no way. No one had any interceptions on the Saints. How did we lose? Wow. My first undefeated season in rebuild history is ended by what would end up to be the 9 and 7 Saints led by AJ McCarron. <laughs> uh, all right, let's go ahead and check out the stats. Jameis Winston 4500 yards, 45 touchdowns to 8 interceptions. Absolutely awesome season. Ty Gurley too, 1600 yards, 12 touchdowns. Really played quite well. Mike Evans 1300 yards, almost 1400, 9 touchdowns. Ellis June with 8 touchdowns, Darian Boston with 1,100 yards and 12 touchdowns, ASJ also had 8 touchdowns, um, sacks, they're down, still Tyron Smith letting up 9 is unrealistic, tackles for loss would be 15 for Von Miller, 13 from Gerald McCoy, 12 for Pernod McPhee, oh, what, okay, 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 <laughs> bring yourself together, Jesus Christ, snap back into it. Okay, 25 fucking sacks from Von Miller and Pernell McPhee. Maybe you guys were right about Pernell McPhee. Oh my. In the same season, on the same team, two players broke the record for sacks in a season with 25. That's, that's impossible. Interception three for Ronald Darby. We're not getting the picks, but when you have players with dual 25 sack seasons... I feel like you're doing something right. No defensive touchdowns, though. Go ahead and check out yearly awards. I guarantee you that they didn't win defensive player of the year. Jameis Winston, league MVP. We already know that. Todd Gurley at number nine. Coach of the year. Gotta be. <laughs> Jameis Winston wins offensive player of the year. Todd Gurley at number four. Defensive player of the year goes to Von Miller. Yes, I didn't think it would happen. Pernell McPhee at number two as well. There we go. Offensive rookie of the year. DeAndre Benoit. I don't think we have any players even in here. Oh, we do. Brandon Casey. Who are you? Jameis Winston has 58,000 XP. Holy. We gotta... There is no way. All right. We have a first round by. We're heading into the division, into the divisional. I'm going to upgrade players. Um, the fucking Saints. Oh, I can't fucking wait. I wish. At Bucksfield? What happened to Raymond James? What, did they knock it down? So this is the roster headed into that divisional playoff game against the New Orleans Saints. Um, bunch of promising things with this team. Bunch of players up and overall. We should be able to come out here with the W. Quan Alexander really not developing well. It's unfortunate, but it's the way that it goes sometimes. We should still be able to beat the Saints. After all, they did go 9-7. and seven, and We have the best team in the league. 93 overall against an 83 overall. Why do I feel like I'm about to lose this game? So we have a way smaller lead than I thought we would, only by a couple of points here. Uh, and the Saints just took the lead. Please just finish this one out. That should be the ball game, and it is 26 to 17 is your final score. Uh, as we get revenge on the one team that stopped our undefeated season, potentially. Um, well, I guess in the regular season. We are looking to continue that in the playoffs, and that's not a bad start. I don't know why the Saints keep giving us a good run for our money. Much better team overall. 97 offense, 97 defense, 93 overall. Okay. All right, now in the conference championship, we have the Seattle Seahawks, a team that's usually in here, and they usually are very, very good. We're a 94 overall. They're a 90. Should be a pretty tough game. Oh, I wish they were a lot worse than they are. Off to a really, really nice start at 21-3. to and hopefully we can hold on to this one. 35-16 to 16 will be your final score here today. And your Tampa Bay Buccaneers are NFC champions. 
Bobby Wagner is crushed. That's good news for us, though. Sorry, Bobby. Uh, it's what we do out here. We come out here, uh, we go three seasons of not making the playoffs, and then we dominate 15-1, and win the NFC Conference Championship, and head to the Super Bowl. And what I'm going to do, in honor of this momentous occasion, is some people often tell me to check what players made the Pro Bowl. Um, so why not give that a try? You know, 99 offense, 97 defense. <sighs> should be should be like a 98 overall on the right this team is this team is pretty stacked all right so as I said we have the New England Patriots in the Super Bowl 84 overall and we are coming out in the color rush because they are actually way better believe it or not I know you're looking at them they're a little bit overpowering they are way better than the disgusting regular uniforms that the Buccaneers try to rock with and I guess we'll go color rush for the Patriots as well they do look pretty sick so here we go 94 versus 84, Tampa Bay versus New England, Box versus Pats, Buccaneers versus Patriots, because why not just throw another one in there? Totally unnecessary, totally redundant. But we are now going into the Super Bowl. Can we pull out the victory here in season number four? I think so. New England out to an early lead. That's not what I like to see. Oh, not at all. Going to be 20 to 9, 21 16. I'm jumping in. Are we on offense? We're on offense. I'm jumping in. Oh my god, dude. What is with two clock? All right, we have no timeouts. We got to do this. Streak Austin Safari and Jenkins. It's been a while since I've jumped in. He's open downfield. Don't worry about the clock. Go into the hurry up. I should be looking to spike it, but I'm not going to. Just keep trying to score. This is on all Madden difficulty, I'm pretty sure, but it's, you know, regular sliders. Uh, I should be looking to get out of bounds. Play action. Jameis rolling out. Pressure coming in. I'm throwing it away. Whoa, did he just underhand that out of bounds? What in the fuck? Believe it or not, guys, I am far better at pressing simulate and making trades than playing in the game. Uh, where's Todd Gurley? Why is he not on the field? Let's go. Oh, why are you not continuing to the outside? Boston with the speed, though. He's out of bounds. Okay. I don't know how that ended up happening. 32 seconds left to score a touchdown. It's doable. Todd Gurley back in the game. About time. Todd Gurley, please, inbounds. Okay, oh my god, Todd Gurley caught the ball and fell out of bounds. The clock is going to stop. 27 seconds left. We have this. Streak Austin Severian Jenkins. June in motion. Here's the play action. We're gonna we're just gonna check down. Get out of bounds, Lockler. Oh my god, the golden locks. He's like a stallion. 21 seconds left. I like Darian Boston here. I do. Jameis Winston rolling out. Pressure coming in. I wanna throw to Y, but I can't throw across my body like that. Okay, throw it away. 14 seconds left. Ooh, Super Bowl on the line. Number one thing I'm looking to avoid is um, a Steve McNair situation with the uh, over-the-middle pass that was stopped at the one. Looking to avoid that at literally all costs. Going to the right. Oh, pressure coming in. I got to throw it away again. There could have been somebody open, but I just... Oh, my God. Can I just simulate, please? Nine seconds, fourth and one. This is the play of the game. They're dialing up a blitz, throwing over the middle. The block from Todd Gurley doesn't come in. June breaks a tackle into the end zone, touchdown. Oh my God, it happened. Todd Gurley, you, how the fuck do you miss that block? Oh my God. We're gonna win the Super Bowl. Let's take another look. As the blitz came firing in, it was right up the middle. I believe that's Dante Hightower. Dante Hightower and, I don't know, Max Polo came in there. Jameis Winston barely got the throw off under the middle. And Todd Gurley could have made a block on Devin McCourty that would have secured the victory. And he runs right by him. We could have been stopped at the one. But what is his name? Ellis June? I don't even know the man's first name. Broke a Devin McCourty tackle. And then got tackled into the end zone by Malcolm Butler. But he was into the end zone for the score and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers against all odds. Even though that's not really true. Great first down there. A great last drive. June again into the end zone. It's a field goal game. That should be it. One last play. Who is Breston? He's going deep though. Can it be ice right here? Knockdown. And that's the game. Despite, it, despite amazing performance from Breston... The Tampa Bay Buccaneers have won the Super Bowl. Oh, it feels so good. I'm, I gotta be honest with you, when I jumped in on that final drive, I was not confident in my ability.
to lead us to the promised land. But it happened. It happened. We did it. We're Super Bowl champions. 18-1 and one in the last season. The Saints beat us by a field goal in that one game. We saw it. It was tough. It is what it is. This was a great episode. It was probably a really long video. Like 40 minutes or so. Could be. But thank you guys so much for watching it. I really do appreciate it. But that's going to be it. Super Bowl champions. I really wish I could see who the Super Bowl MVP was. Usually, you know, it shows across the screen. Um, but I guess that's not going to happen. So I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching. And bye.